pool of carcinogens defined as uh, cancer causing substances. So when you inhale the smoke, it actually damages the cell linings of your lungs. Initially your body's immune system is able to repair the damage. However, over time repeated exposure may lead to permanent scarring and the abnormal cells are more likely to develop into cancer. But you need to understand that the risk of lung disease is not only higher in the active smokers but also in passive smokers. Yes, of course it can happen. The strongest risk factor for lung cancer is smoking. However, even in non-smoker, lung cancer can develop. So most of the time it is because of passive smoking. And there are some scientific data which proves that lung cancer uh, can be linked with air pollution or some occupational hazards like those uh, workers who are exposed to asbestos. Recently, more and more number of young and female non-smoker people are coming with diagnosis of lung cancer in our clinic and many of them are actually diagnosed having some uh, genetic mutations which uh, ultimately lead to uh, their lung cancer development. Well, you need to understand first what is screening. Screening is detecting cancer in very early stage in asymptomatic healthy people. When you don't have any symptoms of cancer, some intervention, some investigation can uh, detect cancer in your body. So in West, there are uh, many randomized controlled trials conducted to, uh, and they have shown that uh, doing a low dose chest x-ray once a year can detect lung cancer even in healthy smokers. Uh, it is very important for lung cancer because lung cancer symptoms tend to show up only when the disease is at an advanced stage. So regular screening can help us detecting uh, lung cancers in very early stage and which will lead to successful treatment. People who come uh, with symptoms of cough, shortness of breath, or chest pain, and simple chest x ray can pick up a lesion in, uh, in their lung. Then uh, we need to do a, a CT scan of thorax, and if uh, the mass is confirmed on CT scan, then we suggest biopsy. So the biopsy can be done either CT guided or it can be done also bronchoscopy guided biopsy. You need to understand that for confirmation of cancer, biopsy is uh, compulsory. You can't avoid a biopsy. And because of lung cancer, histopathologically there are different types of lung cancer and the systemic chemotherapy regimen, they differ from type to type. So that's why biopsy is compulsory these days. A lot of young and female non-smoker patients are getting diagnosed with lung cancer and in those cases we can often, very often we detect some genetic mutations for which we have different targeted therapies. So uh, you need tissue to detect those genetic mutations and that's why uh, tissue biopsy is very important. Now once tissue uh, biopsy confirms the diagnosis of lung cancer, then we need for uh, exact uh, staging workup, you need to do a ideally a PET CT scan of whole body or a CT scan of thorax, abdomen and a bone scan. And if patient has some symptoms suggesting of uh, a, uh, disease spread in central nervous system, then we ask for MRI of brain. In very early stages of lung cancer, that means the tumor is confined in the lung, surgery is one of the most important uh, modality of treatment for lung cancer. However, many times patients are old and because they are fragile and uh, because of their many uh, comorbidities like COPD or heart disease or diabetes, they may not be fit enough to undergo such um, surgery. So in such cases, we treat them with radiotherapy and chemotherapy or immunotherapy and targeted therapy. Chemotherapy has 
has role to play in different stages of lung cancer. In uh, operable lung cancers, even after surgery, if there are many high risk factors present in post-operative histopathological report, then patient will require adjuvant chemotherapy so that the, the, to reduce the chance of recurrence. In stage 3 lung cancer, surgery is not possible. So uh, we treat those patients with curative intent, uh, both uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy are used as a combination. And in stage 4 lung cancer, they are not curable, but our intent is to prolong their life with a good quality of life and to reduce the symptom burden of the disease. So those uh, stage 4 patients are treated with chemotherapy. Medical science has progressed uh, so much that uh, today we don't treat a stage 4 lung cancer patients uh, with uh, age-old chemotherapy only. We try to uh, find out that what are the mutations, uh, genetic mutations which took place in patients' tumor cells. These are the driver mutations, genetic changes because of uh, what the tumor actually uh, developed. So we try to target those genetic mutations with targeted therapies. Most of the time they are oral targets. And these oral targeted therapies, they work better if that genetic mutation is there in that tumor cells. The patient's survival is prolonged compared to chemotherapy. The side effects of those targeted oral tablets are lesser compared to uh, conventional chemotherapy. Now coming to immunotherapy, many tumor cells, they discharge some molecules, those dis molecules have some inhibitory role on the body's own immune system. Now immunotherapy drugs, they actually counter these inhibitory molecules and uh, the body's own immune system gets activated. Now the patient's own immune system that kills the tumor cells. So this is the mechanism of immunotherapy, how it works. The, immuno, the beauty of immunotherapy is that the immunotherapy, uh, use of immunotherapy in stage four lung cancer can prolong survival and immunotherapy has lesser side effect profile compared to conventional chemotherapy. And immunotherapy, those patients who are responding on immunotherapy, most of the time these responses are sustained compared to conventional chemotherapy.